watching online. It could be. All right. Glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Take your hymnals. Turn to hymn number 288. Those of you watching online, it is I Am Resolved. I Am Resolved. 288, and we're going to sing all three verses. Yeah. 
turn over to 261. 261, turn your eyes upon Jesus, and we will do all three verses. In that. I know that's going to be hard to beat, but who else has a praise? <laughs> I praise the Lord that we're looking forward to a new year and I pray that it will be so much better than the current year. <laughs> All right, Sister Sheila, praising the Lord for the new year uh, that we are getting ready to start in just a matter of days. And uh, you may or may not have noticed uh, that our songs were about starting new, right? Uh, I am resolved, and I, I'm looking for my uh, my prayer list, but it's not there because it's in the front of my Bible. But our hymn selection was about this new year. I am resolved, and, and it's our prayer that you will be resolved to live for the Lord. And, and we started, uh, we followed that with Set My Soul Afire. And listen, if there's ever been a time that we need to be fired up for the Lord, it's now. Amen. And uh, we, we can't work it up. God has to set our soul on fire for Him. And, and that's our prayer. 
And uh, the last song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Uh, I don't think you can turn your eyes on Jesus without getting your soul fired up and helping you with that resolve. So that was the whole point of those, those hymns. Uh, all right, I, did I see another praise? Yes, um, praise the Lord for, you know, if anything, hopefully 2020 has helped us look towards the Lord, yeah. you know, and so um, like Ms. Sheila said, for this next year and just believing, you know, that he will provide and he will, um, you know, he's kept us this year. And he can do so much more than he did this year. That's right. You know. That's right. Um, and then just to be able to get to visit with um, family and friends. And um, hopefully um, in the next month, um, Tommy should be having um, employees return to the building he's in, which should hopefully mean some schedule adjustments. Yeah. That, you know, is our prayer. Amen. So, Amen. That would be That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other praises? Please. Yes, sir. Please put that to get Jimmy to us. All right. Praise the Lord. Daddy made it safely to work. And yes. And and, and, and and the sad thing is, uh, you know, what one of the roads when I worked in Plant City, I would go down 39 and there's a horrible accident on it a couple mornings ago. A motorcyclist was killed, and it wasn't his fault. It was somebody else passing. And need to pray for the families of all those involved, the, the deceased as well as the other driver. Uh, those roads are treacherous. They're too late, and, and uh, some people get so impatient, and they put lives at risk. So, all right, any other praises? All right, uh, prayer requests. Let me go down the list that I had to hunt for. Uh, well, we start that off with a praise. If you weren't here last week or Sunday or if you didn't catch it online, uh, Brother Billy Lutz has been deemed cancer-free only two months after having been diagnosed. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. All right, but we need to continue to pray for him uh, for other health issues. Uh, all right, we need to pray for general health issues for the following. Sister Shirley Auten, uh, Sister Fran Thompson, Betty Wilhoy, Cedra Mora, uh, Darice Jordan, and Garlene Spat. And uh, also Sister Garlene's granddaughter, Shelly Renee, that uh, has a high-risk pregnancy and the baby is due in June. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to be reminded of this prayer request often because uh, we need to keep her in our prayers. Uh, and so, uh, and then uh, continue to pray for Brother Stephen Chitty. He was in an automobile accident last week. He was able to be here Sunday. He, uh, fortunately for him, it was minor, but, uh, you know, the third day after an accident is when you find out how much you really hurt. Uh, so uh, keep him in your prayers. All right, other prayer requests. Yes, sir. Please, when Daddy gets there, please, to work. Pray that Daddy will make it safely home from work. Yes, sir. No, no. Make it home to you guys. I understand. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, for my friend that's um, expecting twins, um, she's 37 weeks, mm -hmm. and so um, her prayer is that they'll just decide to come before the year's out. Get that tax <laughs> deduction. <laughs> um, so just pray for continued safety for her and the babies, um, and for her husband with his work situation. Okay. Uh, also be praying for a cousin of mine in New York who is uh, fighting cancer. Uh, if you would, keep him in your prayers. All right. Any others? All right, that sounds like all of them. Oh, yes. I knew there was something coming up that I failed to announce. <laughs> this Sunday is our big celebration. 
the Carpenter family is celebrating 25 years of ministry here at Grace Baptist Church. <coughs> and everyone is invited. Uh, we are going to have uh, Brother Alan Saunders will be preaching Sunday morning for the main service. And afterward, there will be a meal. And there is going to be baptisms after the service. And we will be in the auditorium. So that's where we will be. We're excited to be back in the auditorium. And uh, just looking forward for a very uh, eventful day. Uh, I'm really excited, looking forward to everybody that's going to be here. And, and uh, again, it's going to be a great celebration. All right. All right, Brother Jim, if I can put you to work again, sir. If you'll uh, come and pray for these requests and the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we do thank you for this opportunity to be in your house tonight. And Lord, watch over us and keep us and be with those that was just mentioned on the yes. prayer list, those that uh, known and un and not that we don't know about, that you still touch them and heal them. Yes. And we put our faith and trust in you each day. We know that we think things are maybe bad that, to us, but there's a reason for it. And you're, there's a reason. And we ask now that you bless us offering to further the cause to get the word out to a lost and dying world. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.
take your Bibles, if you will, and turn to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. Well, this is sort of a sad night. Last night we get to get together for 2020. <laughs> Shouldn't it be a happy night? <laughs> no, no, I love y'all. I'm going to give everybody ample opportunity to find the book of Jonah. It is one of those small books that in my Bible, it compasses, compasses two pages. And so it's so easy uh, to overlook. And if you're not sure where it is, go ahead and go to your table of contents. You can find it. Nobody's going to think poorly of you. Nobody's going to think that at all. The fact that you have a Bible and you're trying to find it is a great thing. All right. So, we know the story of Jonah. Uh, when we read about Jonah... Uh, most Baptists say, yeah, he was probably Baptist. Because he got clear direction from God and decided he didn't want to do it and he was going to do his own thing and he ran away from God. But if Jonah teaches us nothing else, it teaches us you can't run away from God. He tried running from God and he ran smack dab into him. Right? Yes. I mean... Uh, we know uh, he tried to hide and he tried to blend in on this ship and God got everybody's attention. I got a message out of Jonah that I preached that the title pretty much summarizes it. Who are you taking with you? Right? I know Christians that say, well, this is my sin. It doesn't affect anybody else. Well, you don't know that. When we look at Chapter 1 of Jonah, we see how Jonah's sin affected a whole shipload of people, literally. And we know what happened. He got thrown overboard. God got his attention. Now, I want to talk briefly about this great year that everybody loves to hate, 2020. I saw... A meme on Facebook, and I'm sure uh, those of you that are uh, on it probably have seen the meme too. The most worthless purchase of 2019 was a 2020 calendar or planner. <laughs> right? Because nothing went as planned. Right? None of us, I say none of us, nobody I know had the foresight that 2020 was going to unfold the way that it did. You know, when this thing first started, uh, this pandemic, when it first started in the first year, we were told six weeks. Wow, long as six weeks of our lives, right? And I know that there are other things that have happened for folks that had nothing to do with <clears throat> the coronavirus. Other things have happened. You could take that out, and like I said on Sunday, and maybe your, your year was still rough. Well, I want us to look at Jonah chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the floods uh, compassed me about, and thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountain. The earth with her bars was about me forever. 
Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. I want you to notice verse 2, Jonah said, And I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. Now, Jonah's affliction was uh, his own fault. Mm -hmm. self it was self-induced, self-inflicted. Right? Nobody uh, grabbed a hold of Jonah and said, no, don't go. Come with us. Nobody did that. Nonetheless, he cried out by reason of his affliction. You know, and I, I'm right there with Jonah. I've been afflicted because of my own actions. And as much as I wanted to look around and find somebody else to blame, there, there was nobody else to blame. Just that fellow I see in the mirror. Now, humanly speaking, we might say, well, you know what, Jonah? If you'd have just been obedient and obeyed God, this wouldn't have happened. We might say, Jonah, you made your bed. Now you got to lie. Hmm. Sometimes we can be so uh, void of compassion. Well, they caused it. Let's look at verse 2 again. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. Look at this. And he heard me. He heard me. You know what? No matter the affliction, if it's self-induced or if it's something totally out of our hands and, and we're, we're being afflicted, and I think about all the people that have been affected negatively this year by things beyond their control. I think of the small business owners who have gone out of business. I think of all those folks that maybe they're, they're not able to pay the mortgage. You know, and this thing, it, it tends to snowball. And all these people facing all these afflictions. Friend, listen, if, if you are one of these folks that are facing afflictions because of the economy and because of decisions by the government and uh, whatever the case may be, I want to encourage you, cry out to God. Cry out to God. He will hear you. Maybe you are afflicted because of a decision that you made. Right? Jonah, he didn't think that all, he, all Jonah thought was, I do not want to do what God wants me to do. God is asking of me the impossible. He's asking me to go to people that are the most vile and wicked. And I just can't do it. And, and so he fled, attempted to flee from God. But my Bible says that God prepared a fish, a great fish. God knew where Jonah was going to be. God knows where you are. God knows where you are. You have not been forsaken by God this year. You might say, preacher, you can't prove that to me. Preacher, if you knew what I was going through, if, if, if you just understood all that has happened to me, God has not forsaken you. God has not forsaken you. I saw a thing that said, we don't live in a God-forsaken world. We live in a world that has forsaken God. Yeah. Amen. And that is the truth. 
You know, every, every time we have elections, I, uh, I vote because I believe as a Christian, I have a duty, I have a responsibility to cast my vote. I do my best to make the wisest decision that I can. When it's for local things, local judges, local city council or ordinances, uh, I try to do my homework and I try to learn as much as I can. And I go and I, I cast my vote. And, and I know that the Bible teaches us that God sets up rulers. Some people might say, then why bother voting? Because I think God expects you to. He expects us to be good stewards. And that's not only of money or possessions. But I think that also includes our citizenship and our civic duties. And I pray and I ask God. You know, I, I vote for who I think is the, the, the best choice. But I was talking with somebody today and I reminded them, we don't always get what we want. <clears throat> Sometimes we get what we deserve. Amen. And I think about Jonah and I think about this affliction. Now it was his. He is going through this because of his jo choices. But then I think of another man named Job. Man, if there was anybody ever on the face of this earth to be able to cry out <clears throat> and say, hey, this is not of my own doing, it's Job. Job wasn't stricken the way he was because of sin. On the contrary. Job was stricken the way he was because of his righteousness. Jonah said, I cried by my reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Jonah was doing something historical. Nobody else had ever done this. Jonah went on the first all-air-conditioned submarine ride. <laughs> he spent three days and three nights in the belly of that well. You say, oh, it says great fish. Read Matthew. It's a well. I can only imagine what those conditions were like. And I'm not going to go into the details that I see in my mind. <laughs> because some of you may not have eaten, or maybe if you're home you're eating, and I'm not going to do that. But he describes what he experienced. In verse 6 he says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountain." What he's talking about there was in that well, he went to the depths of the sea. He says, the earth with her bars was about me forever. You know what he's talking about when he says the bars? The whale's teeth. He says, the earth with her bars were about me forever. Well, we know that it was only three days and three nights, but let me tell you something. For Jonah, while he was in that fish's belly, it was forever. <laughs> it was forever. And sometimes we can be afflicted, whether it's of our own doing or whether it's happenstance or whatever, and we feel like we're in it forever. And Satan is going to tell you that God does not care. But we have to remember that Satan is a liar and the father of all lies. Just as he accuses you to God, saying, oh, you don't want that Stacy Carpenter, he's a sinner. 
he accuses God to us. He said, God doesn't want you. You're a sinner. That's why you're facing what you're facing. No. Friends, let me tell you something. You could be in the situation you're in because you're a Jonah. You brought it upon yourself. You made decisions. You went against God's direction. And he's having to bring you in line. We call that, the Bible calls that chastisement. Or you could be a Job. Doing everything that you know to do. And things still happen. Maybe you're somewhere in between. And these things are happening. Let me encourage you, first of all, don't swallow Satan's lies and blame God. See, when things happen in my life that I think are unfair, and I get that uh, urge, that temptation to blame God, I remember God's traits. God is good. God is good all the time. God is the ultimate father. He doesn't want to see me hurt. He doesn't do things in my life simply to cause me pain. Does God allow pain to come into my life? He does. Just like Job. He's wanting to teach us. If we allow him, he will use what we're facing to our benefit. Right? We're told in Romans, all things work together for good to them that are the called according to his mercy. It doesn't say all things are good. It says all things work together. See, we see here, chapter 1, we see Jonah running from God, disregarding God's known will for his life, and getting himself in a mess. In chapter 2, we see that Jonah gets right with God. Look at verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. Verse 8. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. See, we have to be careful when we see somebody going through difficulties in their life, we don't know if they're a Jonah or a Job. We don't know if what they're going through is God's chastisement or God using what's going on in somebody's life, not just for their benefit, maybe the benefit of others, others that are witnessing what's going on. This is, we read verse 2, or chapter 2, and we see Jonah got right with God. Only took him three days and three nights. And he had a change of attitude, and he had a change of heart. I think that if he hadn't had a change of heart at the end of the third day and third night, he would have kept those accommodations. Right? Now, take a look at chapter 3, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Look at verse 3. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city 
of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. <laughs> you see that? Jonah, not only did he get right with God, he's what we would call highly motivated. <laughs> right? At the end of chapter 2, verse 10, it says, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. All right? Sometimes our, our sinfulness makes others sick, like it did this fish. And so Jonah's on the land, and the Lord, look at this. The Lord didn't say, Jonah, I, I'm not going to use you now. I gave you an opportunity, and you turned your back, and you literally ran from what I wanted you, you to do. You've blown it, son. You're not going to get another chance. No, 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 no. The Bible says and the word of the Lord came out of Jonah the second time. <clears throat> so listen, Christian friend, maybe you've blown it. I have. There have been times when I was Jonah. I turned my back on what the Lord wanted me to do, and I set out doing what I wanted to do. God didn't write me off. When I got right with him, my task was still waiting for me to do it, just like Jonas. So don't let Satan tell you, you don't, there's no need to repent because God's not going to forgive you. And even if he does forgive you, he's not going to use you. That's a lie. But he became highly motivated. The Bible says that Nineveh was three days' journey from where he was. And it says he entered the, the, entered the city of Nineveh after a day's journey. Right? He took that express flight. That's it. He was high-stepping. He was motivated. I don't know, maybe... Maybe he was listening to the Lord on that beach and he looked out at the water and he saw a dorsal fin. And he said, not again. And he just, he, he lit out. He lit out and he got to Nineveh and he did what God told him to do. And here's the great thing. God used Jonah. See, you might start out and blow it like Jonah did, but that doesn't mean that God can't use you. That doesn't mean that God is not going to uh, give you the victory in what he's called you to do. Yeah, a lot has gone on this last year, and I'm looking forward to 2021. I am. I look back at 2020, and I see what God's done. Satan doesn't want you to see how God's worked in 2020. Satan wants you to see all the negative things from 2020. And there's plenty to look at. But God has worked. He's worked in the lives. Guess what, folks? You know what happened during 2020? Souls were getting saved. Amen? God still saves. And he was saving during 2020. I am excited about 2021. Because I know God is still on the throne and God is still working and he's going to continue to work. That's why we chose those songs that we did. And, 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 and those, those uh, lyrics, if you allow God to use them, will speak. What's God going to do in 2021? Well, I think uh, in 2021, we'll finally find out who our president is, All right? That, that's going to happen, Lord willing, All right? And we need to understand God is still working. When God has something for you to do, he doesn't put conditions. Well, excuse me, he does. You have to be right with him. Right? God leads you to do something, uh, uh, tells, shows you what he wants you to do, 
and you have sin in your life, God's not going to use you. And I, when I say sin in your life, I'm talking about unconfessed sin. Maybe there's that pet sin. God is not so hard up that he'll use a dirty vessel. But when you sin and you avail yourself of 1 John 1, 9, what is it? If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we have to confess it. We, we have to take the lead. God's waiting and willing, just like he's waiting and willing to save. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Nobody is going to go to hell unloved. There's not a single person that's going to die and go to hell that Christ didn't die for. But we have to avail ourselves. I had to call upon the name of the Lord in order to be saved. And when I did, he saved me, amen? He forgave me of my sin. He paid my sin debt. And he gave me eternal life. As a Christian, when I sin, I don't lose my salvation. But I do break fellowship with him. That's why uh, 1 John 1, 9 is in the book. We don't get saved again, but we get cleansed. We get forgiven, and we get cleansed, and our fellowship with God is restored. Satan doesn't want you to understand that. Satan doesn't want you to know that. Again, Jonah chapter 3, verse 4. And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey and cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So, Jonah some people would have thrown him away. <clears throat> Some people would say, well, look at Jonah. He, he <clears throat> not only did he backslide, but he ran from God. You know, sometimes people backslide a little bit at a time and they look up and they say, wow, I'm not where I was with God. Well, that wasn't Jonah. Jonah said, God's here. <sighs> I'm leaving him. And again, some people would say, bye, Jonah. But God didn't do that. And God will not do that to you. I don't know what folks have done during 2020. You know, I'm not the spiritual police. But let me ask you to do something. Um, this is not New Year's Eve. Tomorrow is. But I... And I'm not one big for making uh, resolutions, although we did sing I Am Resolved. I want to encourage you to not let Satan get the victory. See, if Satan can get the victory on January 1st or December 31st, then he's got you beat. And he's going to try to hold you down the whole year. So what you need to do is purpose in your heart. First of all, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. What a better way to start a new year as a new creature. Right? Being born into the family of God. If you are saved, let me encourage you. Make sure that you start this new year right with God. And again, what do I mean by right with God? Well, confessing your sins to him. Seeking that forgiveness and having that fellowship restored. You say, well, how do I confess my sins to God? The same way you made them, one at a time. Don't go to God and say, Lord, if I've sinned, because that's a lie. You know you sinned. So you need to call the sin the sin. 
just like God does. And you had to repent to get saved, but you know what? You have to repent at times as a Christian. Repent. Turn from your sin. If you want to have the best year of your life, then let me encourage you. You can, but you do so by dedicating your life unto the Lord and then taking steps to follow through. Living for the Lord. Just going through the steps of saying, okay, Lord, I dedicate myself to you. God knows when it's lip service. God knows when you're just saying it. God knows when you're just going through the motions. And he also knows when you mean it. And when you purpose in your heart that you're going to live for him. Two things you have to know. When you purpose in your heart that you're going to live unto the Lord, two things are going to happen. The first thing is, Satan is going to attack you with everything he has because he does not want that. But the second thing that's going to happen is God's going to have your back. He's going to be there. All you have to do is call unto him. When the load gets too heavy to carry on your own, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Well, we're going we're gonna to end there. We're going to end there. You know, Jonah, God love him. Sometimes I feel like I'm Jonah because I've blown it and done my thing and God's forgiven me when I got right with him and he allowed me to pick up where I left off. Amen. All right, we're going to stand and have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for the message. Thank you for the examples that we have in Jonah and Job. And realize that you are the Lord. That you are on the throne. That 2020 has nothing on you. And I ask that you would give us a desire from the pits of our heart to live for you in this coming year. That we would endeavor to do whatever it takes to follow you. Lord, remind us of your presence. Dismiss us with your blessing. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.